Right, hello and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Battle Report. It's apocalypse time and we have got an incredibly awesome game for you today, guys. Because we've got three marine chapters uniting to take on the Xeno threat uh, with some chaos help as well. So it's orcs and chaos versus three marine chapters combined. We've got some cool jungly style terrain here and also some... Uh, some uh, ruins and uh, various other things mixed in. We're playing a, mi a sort of a hybrid of regular 40k rules with Apocalypse. So we've got um, the Crusade essentially as the mission type with four objectives and we've used these Necron models to represent the objectives. Perhaps they're fighting over some Necron tech. So we've got a uh, objective here, objective here, one in the middle I believe there, and then two objectives here. So it's just an even spread of objectives. And um, this end here, this is going to be Space Marine deployment. Got the United Forces of the Minotaur chapter, along with Black Templars and Blood Angels, all, all contributing. And um, this is going to be Orcs and Chaos, uh, an unholy alliance of two uh, very evil forces. So uh, just to be clear then, each of these objectives was three points. They're scored at the end of the game, um, just as we were playing the Crusade. So sorry, we're not playing True Apocalypse. And then for secondaries, we've got Slay the Warlord, one Warlord per army. We're not doing the Warlords and War Masters we do in some of the bigger Apocalypse games. Um, and we've got Linebreaker. Now for First Blood, because it's Apocalypse, it's a bit unfair that one team would just get that objective, because basically whoever goes first is almost guaranteed to get that. We're going to do First Blood is available to both sides as long as you kill a unit in your first turn. Well, without further ado then, let's look at the two forces. So we have, uh, so for the Warlord for the entire um, army is, is Lord Asterian Moloch. He's got... Um, the black spear and a storm shield and he's got the dark fury special rule which gives him fearless and he doesn't uh, suffer initiative rolls for terrain um, and he's got his bodyguard uh, five terminators with uh, thunder spears they count as thunder hammers but they look cool so we throw spears we've got a dreadnought with a uh, assault cannon uh, a power fist and he's also got extra armor a Storm Raven uh, with the twin link multi motors, twin linked uh, LAS cannons, and the four oh, Storm Strike missiles. Yeah. Okay, uh, over to the uh, first, uh, second elite choice. And with the chaplain as well, we've got the Honor Guards. They've, got, they've all got power swords, uh, bolt pistols, and artificer armor. And they're coming in in a drop pod with a Deathwind la uh, launcher. First attack squad has a flamer and a veteran sergeant. He's just got a bolt pistol with a drop pod and a storm, uh, the Deathwind launcher. Second tactical squad, plasma pistol for the veteran sergeant, plasma gun, and then they're coming in a drop pod for the Deathwind launcher. Uh, scout squad, camera cloaks, uh, they're coming in in a land speed of storm, and then we've got Fast attack choice, land speeder with a multi melter, and then we've got just as a Lord of War, Imperial Knight with the twin linked, no, rapid fire battle cannon and the Reaper's chain sword. So that is the entire Minotaur force there, and basically all of it in reserve, am I right? Uh, bar the scouts and the Imperial Knight, yeah. Nice. Uh, then we move on to the Blood Angels, so for troop choices out the front here. Squad of five scouts, just making up a little bit of points at the end. Uh, five scouts with camera cloaks and sniper rifles. Tactical squad of a flamer and a missile launcher. And then the jump packs, all the jump packs. We've got 10 assault marines, veteran star sergeant, plasma pistol in there, and a power fist. And they're joined by a chaplain of a jump pack, uh, an imperial, sorry, a um, sanguinary priest with a storm bolter, power fist, and jump pack. And then... 15 Death Company, uh, all jump packs running in a big squad together. We've got Power Fist and Thunder Hammer in that squad, and they are joined by Lamartis. Um, and then finally, running the list off, uh, we've got Mephiston, uh, the world's ugliest sculpt, and uh, his five Terminators, uh, just regular Terminators, um, all in a big squad, and they are running in the Storm Raven, Twinning Las Cannon, Twinning Multi Melter. And finally, almost forgot, just tucked on the end there, we've got. Eight Devastators with four Laz Cannons in the squad. Which brings us on to the Black Templars. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, leading them, we've got 
Grimaldus with his three servitors. Um, along with him is an Empress Champion onto the left over here. Then we've got six squads, or six Crusader squads. Uh, 30 of them with bolters and 30 of them with their chainsaw bolt pistols. They've got some very different weapons. So like all the Crusader, these ones on the left have a melter gun and a power weapon or a power axe. And on the right we've got here uh, a plasma gun on each of them. And one, one of the HQs has got a uh, match pair of lightning claws and one plasma cannon. And then finally, the last two at the back here, we have a Relic Leviathan Dreadnought with the Storm Cannon and a Siege Claw. Uh, also got the 300km missiles and Armoured Ceramite. And the <coughs> Contemptor Dreadnought at the back there with a Chain Fist and a Curse Assault Cannon. Right then, so that concludes the um, Imperial Army of Space Marines. 6,000 points in total, 2,000 from each chapter. Hopefully some nice synergy here as the three chapters work together. Really looking forward to seeing how this force gets on. So, uh, the Warlord for the uh, Chaos Army is this Demon Prince. He's got Blood Forged Armour, which gives him Eternal Warrior and um, it will not die. No, feel no pain, sorry. Eternal Warrior and feel no pain. And then he is part of the Carnal Cohort Formation. So that involves three, three Blood Crushers at the back there. Eight Blood letters with a banner, a uh, instrument, and a hunter there. And same with this squad here. Same with this squad here, except for there's no um, champion. He's just nine men there, and just ten by themselves there. And then over here we've got five flesh hounds. That is the formation. And over here we've got four squads of eight berserkers. Uh, each squad has got uh, melter bombs and. Uh, power swords in each squad for the champions. We've got seven bikes over here with one plasma gun and the champion has got a lightning claw. We've got another squad of seven. This has got two melter guns and the champion has a power fist. Then we have a lord on a bike with sigil of corruption and two lightning claws. And next to them we have five possessed and at the back here we've got the big guy, we've got the Kaitan, um, just standard. And finally we have the Hell Drake with the Bale Flamer. So one foot half of the, uh, the traitor Xeno kind of alliance here, uh, the heretics, yeah. Uh, that's one half. Let's move on to the, uh, the Xeno element, which is the Orc forces. So just start on here with these guys. Yeah, we've got Zad Stark the Ripper. And then we've got a war boss, he's just got power claw and boss pole. And got another war boss, he's got power claw, boss pole, the lucky stick, and an attack squig. Then uh, this group over here, they're all war bikers. Um, the knob here has got a power claw and boss pole. And um, this guy's a pain boy on a bike. Yeah. So they're war bikers, not they're, knob they're bikers. War, uh, those, the, the Death Sky ones are, are war bikers. Yeah. Then we've got two uh, big mechs here. Uh, this guy's got the fixed wrappers. Mm -hmm. And this guy's from the War Guard School supplement, and he's got the Mega Force Fields, and he's got two Grot Oilers. Then this group of knob bikers, um, everything's, you know, what you see, what you get there. They've got a war banner, um, Pain Boy, and he's the actual uh, boss knob. That one, just with the yeah. shoes, uh, he's got no power claw or nothing. Um, and then we've got the other group of knob bikers, uh, they've got war banner, it's a pain boy. Um, he's this, this guy doing the, pulling the wheelies, the boss knob in that one. And again, there, what you see is what you, see, what you get. Tractor cannon, just standard. Um, and two mega dreads, uh, they've got the kill cannon and the ripper claw, and they've both got um, got riggers, gives them it will not die. And last but not least, uh, the custom stomper. Um, so he's got two death guns on his shoulders. He's got um, the big can I forget his name, no, death cannon or something, they're <laughs> all death something. And uh, Super Gatler, uh, Death Arsenal, Burster Cannon, Flame Belcher. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that's pretty much it. So, wow, I mean. Certainly two very aggressive armies we've got here against a pretty aggressive marine list as well lots of drop pods and assaulty troops So this should be an absolute bloodbath
Right then, I should also just add in reserve. So for the Minotaurs, we've got a bunch of guys drop podding in. Uh, got two Storm Ravens to both sides. Uh, our Warlord is in one. And uh, the Beast Incarnate and Fiston is in the other one. Uh, and the Scouts are out flanking. So quite a bit of reserve here for the Space Marine. Right, so then reserves for Orcs and Chaos. So we've got the Helldrake, obviously, as a flyer who will fly in. And then all these guys are a big formation. And um, we'll explain more about how it works when we get there. But essentially, Demon Prince deep strikes in. And he acts as a sort of beacon. And then all of these guys can deep strike in around him without scattering. And then we've got a ton of the Orc bikers. Uh, these guys out flanking. Uh, no, they're not. They're just in reserve. Just in reserve. Um, and then it's the two big mechs as well. And they're inside reserve. the custom stomper. Oh, they're inside the custom stomper. So that's reserves for both sides. Let's dive on in. Right then, both sides have now deployed. It's going to be Chaos and Orcs who are going first. So we'll start by looking at them. We've got a big horde of bikers here. They look pretty tough. Um, and then the Corn Berserkers are arrayed out here. Go around and look at those properly here. What's uh, this guy's name again? Uh, the Kaitan. Yeah, the Kaitan. He is here. He is here. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly there. Uh, the Berserkers carry on out here. And then we get into the Orcs end of the table. We've got the Knob Bikers here. Uh, more Bikers here. Uh, two Mega Dreads and the big Custom Stomper. Um, and then that's uh, the Tractor Cannon, isn't it? Yeah, cool. So that covers um, Chaos and Orc deployment. Over here, for the Blood Angels, we've got a tactical squad, quite close to that objective. Devastators are up there with their last cannons. And then hidden in behind, we've got the Sanguinary Priest, uh, the Chaplain, and the Assault Marines, next to the big Imperial Knight, and some snipers uh, for the Blood Angels there. Big squad of death company uh, with Lamartis. They are hidden in these ruins uh, in the middle of the board. And then we get into the more of the Templars. And uh, big squad here. Landspeed of Storm. More scouts. These are the Minotaurs who have been deployed here. Uh, and then we have the Dreadnoughts. And um, what are these? What are the kind of names of these squads? They're Crusader all, all, all squads. They're, all yeah. squads. They're just 10 men, uh, Marine yeah. squads, so everyone really. Just armed either with close combat or shooting. Yeah, <coughs> and obviously it's difficult with an army you're not that familiar with, and we've got the two <laughs> dreadnoughts <laughs> there as well. So that covers everything. Chaos and orcs are going first, unless we can seize on a six. Now this matters. Do can it. we do it? Do it. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, not quite. <laughs> so that is chaos and orc turn one coming right up. Right, so movement for Chaos and Orcs in their turn one. Bikers zooming up the field. And then Berserkers, I think they've done their run moves as well. And uh, they've moved up here. And obviously we're pretty intimidated by that. Um, and then over here, bikes. We've also done the turbo boosts as well. So they've jumped right up here. And uh, we've also got these uh, <laughs> this monster uh, eyeing up some targets down here. So uh, is there any psychic... Straight on into the shooting phase. So, uh, not too much shooting to report, and there's going to be no assaults, uh, obviously, on this, this turn one. Over here, the bulk of the fire was actually directed at the Devastators here. Tons and tons of fire from the Stomper, and a little bit of fire from the Dreads as well. Came up, killed uh, the Bullet Catchers, we weren't too bothered about that, but then we... Didn't do too well on a rolling, rolling and actually lost one of the LAS cannons. That was a bit of a blow. Uh, morale check to make. Failed it on the roll of a 9 on a leadership 8. And they fled back here. So that was really unfortunate. We not rolled well there at all. And a stray shot also took out a scout. A little bit of fire, I think, from the death arsenal. Directed at the um, Imperial Knight. But no damage done. And then over here, tiny bit of shooting. Directed at the Templars. Apparently one Templar has been killed. So not... <laughs> Really, too much damage. Bit of a bit annoying for the uh, the bl um, Blood Angels that uh, these guys will be snap firing next turn. Uh, that's a bit of a blow. But other than that, nothing really to report on turn one. Let's get on in and see what the Space Marines retaliation will be like. Sorry. 
Right, movement for uh, Space Marines on their turn one. So drop pod assault, so they arrive on turn one. We've had two of the drop pods come on, rounding up. Uh, this one's landed here, and uh, the tactical squad inside have jumped out. And this one has landed here with the uh, chaplain. There's a chaplain, right? Um, yeah, and uh, they have got here. Blood Angels have moved out, Tactical Squad and the Assault Squad both bounding forward to meet the Orc charge. Um, these guys have of course regrouped, they've gone here to get some shots up this way, but they will be snap firing because they've had to move, which is uh, rather annoying for the Blood Angels. Scouts stayed put, Imperial Knight has stayed put, Death Company, uh, the, the powerhouse of the Blood Angels, they've jumped forward uh, and are looking to meet those uh, uh, Berserkers, or are they possessed? Uh, at the front, possessed. So possessed and, and, berserkers, and berserkers mixed in. Uh, Crusader squads moving up here, and uh, these guys staying put, and more pushing up here. And we've actually managed to sit ourselves on that objective. But obviously, it's not like regular apocalypse, those are only claimed at the end of the game, so not too important at the moment. It's no psychic at the moment, so uh, Mephiston's not on the board yet, so straight on in to shooting. Shooting phase for the Space Marines on their turn one. So over here we had these guys jump on out, fire into the back of the uh, the dread here, and they've taken he's taken some damage. They've also shaken him, I think, or was it stunned? Just, um, uh, yeah, shaken. 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 Um, over here, bit of fire um, at these guys. I don't think it did much good. Uh, it did clip one of the tactical marines, the Blood Angels. So the uh, Minotaurs have taken out a Blood Angel. Um, then over here, fire directed from these guys. We had a flamer in there, uh, as well as the missile launcher as well, and pistol shots. No avail here. Um, all armor and cover saves made. They've got a two-up jink, and they have been jinking. Um, here, uh, these guys snap firing because they've moved. Um, no, no avail either. And uh, these guys similarly didn't do much. Here, the Imperial Knight actually fired at the... Um, Trapped cannon, I think nicked a whole point off him. And then here we've had bolter fire and the Death Company pistols firing at the uh, berserkers, and uh, they've cleared out quite a few. And then I think here we had a bit of sniper fire, which didn't do much good. Uh, and then over here, talk us through main casualties and points here. I think uh, we've lost some some most bikes. Of the bikes so yeah, right out from the from the bolters and the a couple of sniper rounds. Also, they ran at the vath and shot over the Kai Town, took three hull points off it, which was pretty good. For it That's, to yeah, pretty good going. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, not the most eventful shooting phases. Nothing too crazy happened. No. Um, but let's get into the assault phase. So assault phase then, just the Blood Angels doing the assaulting as you'd probably expect. So here the Death Company made a disorder charge, so instead of getting five attacks each they're only getting three, which are a bit unfortunate, but at the same time they completely destroyed the Possessed and they've reduced the Berserkers down to two. So they won combat quite heavily but the Berserkers are fearless and the Death Company are fearless, so no matter what happened that was always going to continue. Uh, however, they uh, they did lose two because they failed. Um, I think they only inflicted three or four wounds, and so it wasn't particularly good save making. But overall, the Death Company have won there, although probably going to get countercharged very badly next turn, so we'll have to see how that goes. And then, over here, we've had another pretty heavy Blood Angels win. First thing to happen was, uh, was it Zadstruck or Zadstark? Or? Zadstark, yeah. yeah um, challenge was issued, Chaplin accepted, and the Chaplin actually cut him down. Um, pretty handily, without so that was taking yeah, without taking a wound. So that was good stuff going at the slightly higher initiative um, because we've got the formation, the, the force org, which means we have plus one initiative on the charge. And then, um, rest of the attacks, I think we killed three more knobs, so uh, we took, I think, two or three casualties here and a casualty here as well. But overall, Blood Angels won, and the knobs uh, stuck around on the mob rule table, taking another casualty. So two wins there for the Blood Angels, but both the combats continue to next turn. It's time for Chaos and Orc, turn two. Right then, Chaos and uh, Orcs, turn two, and movements happen. So 
The Warlord is on from reserve here. He deep struck here. Stuck his landing, which meant that the squads around him uh, have also come in as well and they've stayed there. Although not everything has come in. Helldrake and some other demons are still in reserve for them, so got them to worry about later. These bikes have charged on and uh, these bikes have split off down here. And then um, the Kaitan, he's decided that the uh, the Death Company, uh, uh, they're not the most juicy target, so he's head off here. And uh, these Corn Berserkers, they've moved in and they're probably going to munch into the Death Company next turn. But that'll, that'll be quite an interesting battle, I think. Uh, Berserkers would get the, um, the charge advantage, but Death Company aren't, aren't a, a bad unit at all. Um, over here, these guys, uh, interesting, interesting movement here. Um, they've kind of gone back to sort of bubble wrap and protect the, um, the uh, what's it called again, a stomper, it was comp the custom stomper. Um, and uh, same with these guys, so that's, that's an interesting deployment there um, with these guys kind of sandwiched in the middle. No psychic once again, Mephiston, the only psyker in either army, hasn't arrived yet. So let's see what shooting can yield on turn two. Right then, so turn two, shooting is over. Not a, not a great deal to report, it's been pretty mixed, but uh, here we had some fire down at this squad. They've uh, killed a couple, but they've made them row, so they're hanging around. Uh, over here, we had more fire from uh, the Stomper. Down here, knocked off two hull points off uh, this guy. Uh, and the scout squad's been ma badly, badly mauled. Only one guy left, but uh, he's made his morale. Uh, then over here, talk us through uh, this end of the board. Yeah, so the fight squad shot at the Crusader squad here, and I think took two or three out in the end. Mm. Um, and then I think the Kaitan shot down at this squad here, took out four, I think, in the yeah. end. And yeah. the bikes took one extra off as well. So yeah, that's about it really. And, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, not a great deal to report, but uh, as orcs, an orc and a corn alliance, you wouldn't expect much in the shooting. It's all about the assault, and there's going to be a big assault phase coming up next. Right, so end of turn two for uh, the corn and orc alliance, and uh, talk us through what happened down this kind of area. Well, essentially, we had the uh, big assault here with I think the, f the full bike squads coming in. Um, it's very bloody in the end. Basically, no, pretty much none of the crusader squad left. Um, the captain died to a challenge from the Lord, the Lord took a wound as well, and then the, essentially the Dreadnought finished off the last three uh, in, a, in, in combat as well, so that's all tied up and uh, fearless and everything, so nothing's moving there. Then over here, the Kaitan charged in, unfortunately killed all three of the Marines that were in the way of the Dreadnought, so that's that really. <laughs> and then moving on to this, this combat here, it looked like the Berserkers had the best of it. Because um, obviously they had the charge advantage with Rage and Furious Charge. Some of the Death Company have, but obviously not this time because they didn't get to charge. So it uh, gave them a big advantage. And it looked like the Berserkers had really got the better of it. Because um, they had killed five Death Company, so pretty good. But then the Thunder Hammer and uh, Power Fist hit Initiative 1 and really evened it up. So as you can see, looks now like the Death Company have sort of had the better of it. So that Death Company, they, they made a disorder charge where they didn't get the benefit of their Rage and Furious Charge. And they've been charged, but they've still managed to hold their own. Which shows even without their sort of strengths, they've shown the uh, the power of that unit. And then down here, um, it's another Blood Angels win, um, but they made their leadership on a roll of a three, the Orcs, which is what they needed because they'd lost combat by four, I believe. So um, yeah, interesting to see how this match is shaping up. I think the next turn is going to be a, a really important one. So let's see how the Marines respond. Right, so uh, marine movement on their turn too. So um, Templars squaring up, raising their bolt guns, ready to give out a hail of fire on uh, the demons over here. Um, and then similarly up here, we've also had the Templars sort of pushing up to aid the Blood Angels who are a little bit cut off at the front. Uh, and then at the back there, Drop Pod coming in for the Minotaurs uh, behind the uh, marines. And also the Land Speeder using a... I think he, did he deep strike in? Yeah, he deep struck in right there, sticking his landing. And this guy's also peeped his nose out around the corner. Uh, over here, the knight has come out, bounding up the field, uh, perhaps looking to take on some of the bikes or the stomper. Uh, these guys are all locked in combat. Actually, no real movement for the Blood Angels at all, because most of our units are either locked in combat. Should say as well, both the Storm Ravens and their crew, uh, their cargo, 
failed to show up uh, along with the scouts so it was a bit unfortunate these guys a bit of a shuffle round and uh, these guys as well regrouping and uh, moving there right so shooting phase for the marines then uh, so here there was a bit of fire here which uh, took out two of these guys right yeah and then um, fire from these guys on the demon prince took off a wound uh, and then the super heavy here was actually destroyed. Uh, was it this guy you got yeah, the, the, the shot in? That, yeah. yeah, and uh, caused a massive blast, which didn't actually kill anyone. Did, didn't kill anyone, nice. Yeah, wasn't all cover saves being made up here and uh, saves being made there, demon saves, and uh, this guy jinked and made more saves. So, uh, but yeah, that is actually a victory point. And uh, we were just discussing um, Marines got first blood as well because uh, they killed something in their first turn. They took out the. Um, possessed there and they also killed um, the HQ on the bike here so uh, victory points Marines are 2-0 up but obviously the objectives are going to be uh, way more important than those points but that may be crucial in the end uh, then over here uh, these guys I think ran 2 inches and uh, the plasma here I think just uh, clipped the drop pod so, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> more friendly fire between the Marines. Um, I guess these chapters aren't really used to working together. So uh, uh, then over here, um, I think there was a little bit of fire back at the bikes, made them jink. And did the Imperial Knight fire? Yeah, he did. He fired at the his rapid uh, battle cannon at bikes, didn't do anything. Mm. He stubbers at the um, flex cannon, didn't do anything. Okay, so that concludes that then. Time for the assault phase. Right, so assault phases are over, so uh, talk us through this, this uh, area. Yeah, the end bit of the Templars here was the uh, Grimaldus finished off the Lord in the challenge, and that was it pretty much, so that's all, all done there. Cool. Um, then in uh, the middle of the board here, the Death Company cut down the, uh, the Zerkers. So that was actually really good for the Death Company, because they'd you know, been charged, but they not only rode out the storm, they're actually ultimately victorious. Um, Lamartis actually had an interesting one, the challenge, inflicted three wounds, but he made three armor saves. And then um, <laughs> afterwards, received two wounds, failed both of his armor saves, but uh, I forgot he had feel no pain. Rolled it afterwards, made both of them, so that was good stuff there. Then over here, um, last of the knob bikers died, which was good news, um, but the Mega Dread stays around and then here the drop pod taken out by the other mega dread so it's actually really interesting is how how this shapes up it's uh, way too close to call at the moment um i can't really say that in any area of the field either side has a clear advantage there's lots of orcs down here which have um you know definitely pose a really serious threat but the guards and uh, not the guards sorry the blood angels and uh, uh, other space marines we've not been completely out muscled here either and then down here as well Lots of space marines, but lots of uh, chaos. So I don't think anyone really has a clear advantage anywhere. So really interesting to see how this pans out. Right, so movement for uh, chaos and orcs on their turn three now. A um, little bit of uh, rejinking around here. The stompers moved out slightly. Um, probably going to get some shots, I reckon, on the uh, Imperial Knight. Uh, and then the uh, war boss here I think he's detached himself so he can take on these guys moving around over to this side of the field there's berserkers I think have sort of reshuffled back maybe to deal with this tactical squad and then over here the demons have uh, carried marching forward and that demon prince looks very menacing and then on from reserve um, these guys showed up and I think there was a second squad that showed up as well No, I just no, just those not. guys <laughs> The hell, the hell Drake, and I think it's two other squads. Still in reserve. Yeah, still in reserve. So it's not been uh, good for either side, reserve-wise. And also, big squad of war bikers also not showed up. So uh, it'd be interesting if the, uh, the space marine reserve sharp next turn, because then that will obviously, you know, uh, that'd be interesting. Uh, so shooting for Chaos and Orcs on their turn three, uh, really the the most important thing to note is the Stomper, who's been an absolute animal this turn. He's uh, laid in a ton of hurt to the Death Company, really whittled down that squad. And also the Templars behind them also taking a lot of heat um, as well as the main the main event where he actually took out the uh, Imperial Knight with a six on the D-weapon. 
just completely obliterated him. Uh, was there anything else really to note? Not really, just lots of bolt pistols. Yeah, yeah, just lots of, you know, lesser shooting really. That was the main event. So uh, without further ado, let's move on into the assault phase. Oh, the honor guard, they, um, our weapons have no use. Yeah. Fucking, that's the first time I've ever used it. They ran off from it killed the, the Mega Dragon and he consolidated. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and that's all down this end of the board, right? Yeah. And he killed, sorry, he killed uh, three guys. Space yeah. Marines. And here he killed, what did he kill, Captain Assault Marines? Uh, one or two Assault yeah. Marines, yeah. And they they actually hit back and penetrated this Mega Dread, but uh, he made his in one safe, so. That combat continues, and then down this end of the board. Yeah, uh, essentially, obviously, Dean Prince in here killed about four men off that squad, uh, and then over here, this blood letter and the was it juggernaut? Or blood or? crusher. Blood crusher, right? Charging yeah. into that squad and pretty much finished off other than Grimaldus and one single servitor. Um, and obviously, just in here as well, that that squad fell back after failing its test and almost being slaughtered. And Lance Peter dying there. Lance Peter got charged and hacked down. Then over here. And the two squads of Berserkers charged into the Minotaurs and uh, destroyed them. Cool. Right, um, so movement then for the Space Marines. These guys over here locked in combat. Uh, over here, uh, these guys have jumped up. They're going to be snap firing, but they're going to make a show of it anyway. And this guy's moved here. Storm Raven with Mephiston in has come on from reserve finally. Uh, and then over here, these guys have begun a long march up towards the centre of the board to try and secure that objective. These guys sort of you know, regrouped a little bit. Um, and here, the Death Company have boosted up, uh, having taken a bit of a beating from the Stomper. And uh, they've killed, I think, three squads so far this game. Yeah, three champions and challenges as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Lamartis has killed three champions in a challenge. So they've done well, the Death Company. Uh, they're very badly blooded, but the Death Company, they're not known for their longevity and then over here also from reserve storm raven flying up the board uh these guys mainly staying put and then over here we've had a bit of re haven't we yeah the uh, contenders come around this way to try and get a, a charge on the blood letters at the, from the back nice um, uh, and then finally the scouts come on from reserve just as an annoyance give them something else to think about maybe we can cap line break over lucky so that concludes movement shooting phase coming right up Alright then, so shooting for the Marines, um, Storm Raven flew on, took out one of the grots on the uh, gun, broke morale, it's made the, uh, uh, the tractor gun or tractor cannon, whatever it was called, uh, run away, so that was some good stuff there. Uh, these guys snap fired, did miss all their shots, they've had to move, uh, and then this sniper jumped down here on his run move, so he's going to move up the board. Uh, over here, the Storm Raven here fired across at the Mega Dread. Down to one wound now, I believe, but it's still hanging on in there. Uh, these guys fired a plasma cannon shot, clipped a death company. Lots of friendly fire between the Marines. Maybe there's some interchapter rivalry, we're not yeah. sure. But uh, yeah, he made his feel no pain, so it was fine. Um, not sure what these guys have done, I think they've stayed put. Um, and then round here, anything of note? No, just the relative last and shot through the, the hounds there. Killed two, killed, killed two and then killed... Uh, no, he didn't actually fight, mm. no, is that so? Yeah. Uh, nothing much really. Storm. Yeah, Lance Storm killed a bike. Lance Peter Storm killed a bike apparently. So uh, yeah, interesting to see how this shapes up. This uh, objective here, hotly contested. Lots of uh, Templars around here, but also lots of demon spawn. Uh, this one open for the taking. These guys can be up to take it. But remember, there's bikes to come on for the uh, um, orcs. This one also contested. You've got Death Company moving up. These guys can jump out and maybe uh, help out. So that one's contested. Uh, down here, very contested. You've got um, Assault Marines and uh, the Dreads here battling it out. And even this one back here, also in contention, because Mephiston and his guys can jump out and maybe try and take that. So every single objective on the board hangs in the balance. There is not one that is a dead cert for anyone as you move into the Assault phase. Right, so combat phase is over then. So here, uh, the fight here, a couple of Marines got killed yet again. Um, penetrated the Mega Dread though and didn't do anything and just stunned him. So he's down to one hole point now and that one's down on one hole point. So they're just holding on there. Um, 
I don't know about combat down here. I think the war boss was killed potentially. Yeah, the uh, chaplain took a wound off him, and then the last honor guard took a wound off him as well. And, uh, mm. No, the chaplain took two, and the honor guard took his last wound. Yeah, interesting stuff. Um, then over here, Death Company charged in, um, and uh, Lamartis didn't win his challenge. Uh, he just uh, didn't. Well, he. Oh. He flipped two wounds, he made his save, so yeah, it's, it wouldn't, it wasn't the fourth, or has he won four already? I can't remember. Uh, that would be the fourth challenge. Yeah, so this is the fourth challenge, he's won three, this one he sort of drew. Uh, but then we killed, I think, uh, four Berserkers, yeah, four, yeah. and we lost one Death Company. So Death Company win yet another combat. So they've been, you know, they've been very badly bloodied, the Death Company, they've taken a lot of losses, but in terms of what they've, you know, in terms of winning combats, they've been consistently winning all game. So that's good stuff from the Death Company. Uh, and then over here, anything? Of uh, real note. So the Demon Prince, uh, obviously, that combat there, they, he, we lost five, but as they're still within six inches of Grimoire, they're fearless, so they didn't run away. Mm. And in here, I think there's two blood letters. Two blood letters. Mm. And uh, what, uh, two wounds on Grimoire. Yeah. So we're just sort of holding on here with the, the Templars. That's pretty much it, yeah. Just yeah. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. Uh, interesting stuff where this, for me, this is where it really gets interesting because down here, We've got the Terminators and Mephiston. Now, Mephiston with his Sanguine Sword is Strength 10 Force Weapon. So against, and he's a very high initiative as well. So against all these knob bikers, he can instant death them. Against the uh, Stomper, he should be pretty effective on Strength 10. So uh, John said he's going to make some desperate attempts to try and shoot down the Storm Raven. But if he, if he, <laughs> but if he can't, that could turn actually really interesting. So the game is really heating up as we move into Zeno uh, and Traitor turn four. four.